Happy Saturday, everyone. Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, I'm about five or 10 pounds heavier and we'll probably have uh, more leftovers and we'll take care of that at the beginning of the new year. Want to do a, a quick recap. I'll be as quickly as possible. There will also be scripture in the email that I'm sending out with this and you can always call me or email me and we can talk about anything you have questions about. First and foremost, wanted to say, man, <laughs> Man, I'm in awe. Pastor Cindy and I were, you know, pretty impressed with the women of Rejoice Church at the Pastor Appreciation Breakfast a week ago Tuesday. There was a turning point where Pastor Jack, the main speaker, was uh, making a point or giving his message when the big screen behind him had this huge, huge uh, logo that said Rejoice Church. So um, how that happened, I, I I can only guess, but I mean, it was just a really, really good time for networking and, and see skill and talent in action. So uh, thanks so much for having us out there. Um, real quick, uh, quick recap, we are now at the Hampton Inn, uh, managed by Hilton, whether that's important or not, uh, on Sunday mornings at 9.30. And maybe we should uh, talk, think about uh, maybe changing to 10, uh, look around to see uh, how the other churches uh, are doing their time to get an idea. But it's an opportunity to have a fresh vision of Jesus in our uh, in this particular phase in our, in, in our ministry, I think it's healthy for us to have a fresh vision of Jesus. And, um, and, and all throughout, we'll probably have to uh, do this over and over again. And the scripture reference uh, that I have was John three sixteen and 17, which is one of the most quoted verses probably of all time of the Bible. And it goes on to say, and I'll paraphrase, that uh, Jesus, uh, God loved the world. Uh, he loved us so much that he sent his one and only son to die for us. And in 16 and in 17, it, it also goes on to say that he's, he came here to save the world, that he's he come here to condemn the world, but to save the world. And that looks differently in a lot of different ways in our ministry and in our calling. All of us are called to, um, um, to help be a part of that salvation and saving the world, bringing people to Christ. So the question I have for you, um, first question is, why did Jesus really, really die for us? So when we are thinking about what to do about our ministry, what thing, uh, you know, programs or um, how we run service, I mean, we really should be asking ourselves, why did re Jesus really die for us? I think it's a good question to ask for us. And the second thing is, is that if we want vision, have a fresh vision of Jesus, well, we can pose a question to God, to Jesus and say, God, what will you have me do? Uh, a real good point of reference is when um, Paul on his road to Damascus and God blinds him and says, hey, Paul, why are you, Saul at the time, why are you persecuting me? And he looks up and he's trembling and he says, what will you have me do, God? What will you have me do? So we need, uh, question number two is we can ask God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, what will you have us do? In continuation of having vision or uh, getting clarity or, or having a fresh uh, vision of, of Jesus, there's a, there's a really cool story where um, Jesus takes a man out of the village. I think there's other translations as we pull him out of the town, pull him out of the city, pulls a blind man out of the village to uh, before he restored uh, his eyesight. And uh, he did that because he got him out of his comfort zone. Imagine, you, uh, we're telling Jesus, hey, 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 I, I, I want to stay here. Any healing you want to do on me? Any answers to our prayers? Um, can you please um, do it while we're here? And that's not what happened. He pulled the man out of his comfort zone and also put him into a, a new environment. So think about it. We're pull, we're, I think we're being pulled out of the house churches. So thank you, Beverly and Walt and uh, Dolores and Ernie for your place for us to have worship. But we're now in a new location. So we've been pulled out and uh, an opportunity to have a, um, a uh, fresh vision of Jesus and his calling on us. But it doesn't end there. In the, while he's um, getting re while he's trying to restore um, while he's restoring the man's eyesight back, of course he spits in his eye. He lays his hands and he asks the man, "Okay, now what do you see? What do you see?" And he says, "Well, all I see is people that look like trees, right?" And so Jesus puts his hand on him again and um, he says, "Okay, what do you see now?" And then he had this fresh vision. Question number three, or point number three, is that we can never, I don't think, uh, ask Jesus enough to. For, for us to touch us again so that we can have a clear, clear vision of what our calling is here at Rejoice Church and, of course, out in the marketplace. So we're always um, out there 
I think, looking for opportunities to help people uh, come over to Christ. I hope this helps. I'll recap. Number one, um, why did Jesus really die for us? Number two, let's ask God what we have us do. And number three, I don't think it hurts to ask Jesus to touch us again so that we can have a really good vision of what he has uh, us do while we're here together in fellowship. Hope to see you soon and love you guys very much.